This is the Titan 1. It may look like a generic USB stick, but it's definitely not. Coming in at $69, nice. They advertise that you can use rapid fire on any controller and you can also use any controller on any console. Well, I'm here to find out if these claims are accurate and does it actually allow you to use mods on a generic Xbox controller or PlayStation controller? And does it truly enable you to use any controller on any console? Oh, and I forgot to mention, this also has mouse and keyboard support. Let's dive into this review. So, starting with the unboxing. <sighs> I've actually owned this device for many years, which means I have no f***ing idea where the box went. But from what I remember and could find online, you get a, a the adapter itself and a mini USB cable. Now, onto the adapter. It's straightforward. On the front side of the adapter, there's a tiny screen that displays numbers or simple error codes. Right below that is a simple button to switch between different presets that you can configure. On the right hand side of the adapter, you'll find a mini USB port. This is where you plug it into your computer for programming. On the back side of the adapter or front, depending on how you look at it, I can look at you anyway. There's a USB port so you can plug your controller into it and use all of its features. Moving on to how to set it up, you first need a computer and some sort of controller. I'm going to use an Xbox controller to demonstrate how to set it up. Start by grabbing a USB Type-C cable to plug your controller into, the Titan 1. Once that's done, go ahead and plug the Titan 1 into the console. It should automatically recognize the Xbox One controller. Then plug in the mini USB cable into the Titan 1 and connect it to your PC. On the device itself, there's a small LED screen that should display a zero, indicating it's connected to the console correctly. Now, let's switch over to the computer and look up the Titan 1 software. Visit their website and hover over support. There should be a drop down menu that will show up. Click on downloads once the download page loads up, download the software for the Titan 1. Make sure you download the one for the Titan 1 and not the Titan 2. Now that the firmware has downloaded, you need to install it. Once it's done, go ahead and launch the program. You're greeted to this page and I'll show you what all of these different add-ons will do for this device and how to set it up properly. For this tutorial, I'm going to completely ignore the online library scripts. Most of them are complete trash and I would avoid them at all costs. They're like your aunt down the road. Now that we got the firmware up and loaded, go ahead and click on plugins. Then click on plugin manager and download all the plugins. I'm going to provide you with a brief review of what each plugin does so you can get an idea of these features and how they work. The first plugin I want to talk about is the Combo Magic plugin. This thing can record your controller's inputs and convert them into their specialty coding software called GPC Code. You can then turn this into a script. Now I'm going to talk about scripts later on in the video and explain to you how they work and the functionality of what a script does and how this correlates with this adapter. Let's say you have a modded controller from a company that claims that their jitter mod is one of a kind and is impossible to copy and no one else has it. With combo magic, you can record it and convert it into an editable GPC script within seconds, which you can then use on your controller. Moving on to our next plugin, that would be MaxAim DI. Max Aim allows you to use mouse and keyboard on your console by mimicking your controller inputs so you can use this plugin with any controller and any console. Also it supports steering wheels and flight sticks as well. You can even use GPC scripts with the mouse and keyboard to add extra features like rapid fire when using mouse and keyboard on your console. That being said, let's move on to the next plugin. Max Repeater enables you to easily remap buttons, analog sticks, and customize your controller layout. It also offers sensitivity adjustment for any button and advanced sensitivity adjustments for your analog sticks. 
This plugin can generate GPC scripts, allowing the user to extend its functionality by manually programming extra features. In essence, MaxAIM provides detailed customization options for your controller settings. On to our last plugin, Game Recorder. This is pretty self-explanatory, especially in recording inputs of your controller, allowing you to replay the same actions without physically touching your controller. These functions are commonly used by people for glitches or any sort of money or RP glitches. Now, moving on to more of our scripting features, we'll start off with Visual Scripting also known as GPC blocks. They provided plenty of custom presets and all the features you need to create your custom mods. I find the GPC blocks to be a very neat feature. They also simplify coding, making it accessible to almost anyone. Moving on to our next feature called programming. It's located at the bottom right of the software. Like legit, like it's the bottom right. It's called programming, guys. There are four squares and device memory slots. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to start off with the composite scripts. This is where you find your custom script sets you have created. To the right, you find the game packs. These are custom scripts provided by the company that has made the Titan 1. What's the difference between the scripts that they created and the ones that you can create is in their custom scripts, they have multiple scripts like rapid fire, anti-recoil, and hair triggers, all in one script. In the bottom left square, you find your custom profiles for Remapper. On the bottom right, you see the GPC files. You can save these custom settings to files and access them later on. The reason why they have all your scripts and custom settings here is so you can add them to your device memory slots. This allows you to switch between different custom settings on the fly without needing to access your computer. You can simply click the button below the LCD to change between your scripts. The LCD screen comes in handy as it displays your active scripts. For example, if you have a custom rapid fire script in slot one and you currently are on zero, you can click the button to switch to one and click it again to switch to two and so on. You have no longer needing to use your computer. You can directly plug this into anything and use your custom scripts. Moving on to our last feature. This is where you can use any controller on any console. Let's say I want to use a PS3 controller on my Xbox Series X. Well, all I have to do is plug in my Xbox controller into the adapter and wait for it to recognize the controller. On the LCD screen, it will turn to a zero, which means the controller information is saved onto the adapter. Go ahead and unplug it and grab whatever controller you want to use on your console. In my case, I'm going to use a PS3 controller and just plug it into the USB port on the adapter. And voila, you have a PS3 controller on your Xbox Series X. To my surprise, these actually barely have any delay. I did feel a little bit with my wireless P PS3 controller, but my wired one actually had none. I would also like to mention that you can use wireless controllers with this adapter as well. That being said, let's move on to the real question in the room. Why am I so hot? Do these plugins actually work? And are they actually any good? Starting off with the first one we talked about, that would be the combo magic. And it actually does what it's advertised to do. It actually was able to pick up the scripts that my strike pack was using and mimic them perfectly. However, I think this program is completely useless. You might have one or two scenarios where you actually would use it, and that's about it. For Max DI, to be able to use this program, you do need to have your adapter plugged into the computer at all times. What it does is it takes your inputs from your computer and ports them to the Xbox by mimicking your Xbox controller. The biggest downside to doing this is you always need a computer plugged in and you always need it to be running. The scenario is that I had my laptop plugged in 
and I had an extra mouse and keyboard off to the side to use for my Xbox. It did work and it actually worked quite well. This is probably my most favorite plugin to use on this adapter. On to our next plugin, that would be the Max Remapper. It did work and it actually worked quite well. This is probably my most favorite plugin to use on this adapter. On to the next plugin, that would be the Max Repeater. Remapper. Yeah, remapper. I'm going to quote what I said earlier that it's just a more detailed customization tool for your controller. Now, where I do think this could come in handy is fine tuning your controllers like what the Xbox has for the Elite Series controllers where you can customize your input, latency, and reaction time. And fine tuning your joysticks. You can do pretty much the same thing by using this plugin. And then the last plugin, the Game Recorder. This could be handy in some scenarios, but honestly, I don't think it's actually useful. Earlier in the video, I did mention RP glitches slash money glitches because back in the day when this device came out, you could do some GTA 5 money glitches by using the adapter or even bot grinding Renal from Rainbow Six Siege, also by using this recording function. But in today's era, I really don't think this is a useful plugin because a lot of this stuff has been patched. Back in Grand Theft Auto, you can mimic something where you walk up and you stand, walk away, and just repeat it, and you would earn a ton of cash. Or to say, Rainbow, I actually made a video about it many years ago, how they get renowned for free, and you basically use this tool and rapidly sit in a match for two minutes and leave and rejoin the match, sit in for two minutes. It would be like a, like a tea hunt or something. And it was useful and it did work, but I don't know in today's days because even now people are getting banned for doing that exact thing, what they call botting. Now I do want to talk about some stuff that I mentioned earlier on, and that would also be the claims, aka rapid fire on any controller and any controller on any console. Actually in fact, both these claims are true. You can put rapid fire mods on your controller by using the scripts slash GPC blocks. And it works pretty well. And of course, you can use any controller on any console. Now, I only have a PS3 controller and an Xbox 360 controller to use as an example in the video. I do wish I had more controllers to showcase this feature, but sadly, I do not. However, this feature works very well. And as I said earlier on, there is some input lag with the wireless functionality of this adapter, but overall it's pretty solid. So if you're just interested in using a PS controller on an Xbox or vice versa, this is a good option. But now to my overall opinion of this device. My quick answer is it's definitely an awesome adapter. You have all these specific functions to use along with the mouse and keyboard functionality, Plus, being able to use any controller on any console. You also have plenty of scripts and customization to do with the adapter as well. I have owned this for a very long time, and I've been very happy with it. I don't use it quite often as I used to when I was younger, but I find this thing very useful in a lot of scenarios. That being said, I definitely do think this adapter is well worth the price, especially if you're in the market for any of these scenarios, this is a good one to buy. And I'm going to leave it there. If you have any sort of questions, feel free to leave them in the comment. I will try to get back to you guys as soon as possible or join my discord. And it's not very well designed, but it does get the job done. If you really have something important you want to ask me about this adapter, I've owned this probably the most or well, the longest out of anything I've ever owned. I bought it, <laughs> I think all the way back when it released in 2017. Uh, cause I was a young kid and I wanted to, uh, play my Xbox scuff controller on my, what well, was an Xbox 360 scuff on my Xbox one. Cause I bought it and then the Xbox one came out and I was like, oh, well I just wasted $400 out the door and I can't use it. So that's why I bought this and it, it worked to my scuff broke, but I'm gonna leave it there. You guys have a good one.